Welcome everyone to our diversity, equity, and inclusion webinar today. My name is Emily Cabbage. I am the Director of Marketing here at NAFA. A couple housekeeping items before we get started. All participants are in listen-only mode, but we are going to have some time for questions and answers afterwards. So I encourage you to use either the chat feature or the Q&A feature in our Zoom app, and we will uh, get to those questions for Miriam later. So it's my honor to introduce you to Miriam Lewis, who's the Chief Inclusion Officer at Principal Financial Group. In that role, she has global responsibility for designing, leading, implement, and implementing strategies that foster a more inclusive workplace, increase employee performance, drive better outcomes for customers, and ultimately improve business results. Prior to joining Principal in July 2019, Lewis worked for 16 years at the Clorox company, where she earned roles of increasing responsibility in DNI and supply chain. She also co-chaired the company's employee giving program, which generated record donations for nonprofit organizations. Lewis previously held positions with the Coca-Cola Company and Family First Financial Services, which was later acquired by Citigroup Financial. Lewis helps to foster diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts across the life insurance industry as chair of the ACLI Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Forum, which is responsible for strategies to integrate DEI into ACLI's industry portfolio. She also provides insights and perspectives to drive excellence in the global and diversity and inclusion marketplace by serving as director on the Diversity MBA Advisory Leadership Board for PNL Groups, LTD of Illinois Holding Company. She also gives back to her local community in numerous ways. As a former board member of the Atlanta Ronald McDonald Charities, she helped organize to increase staff connectivity, developed a better understanding of customers and families, and significantly increased board diversity. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Miriam Lewis. Miriam? Yes, thank you, Emily, and thank you to all of you for joining today. It's exciting to have this very timely and I'll even say timeless discussion on diversity, equity, and inclusion. So, Emily, thanks for the opportunity to be here. And for those of you who are connected on LinkedIn, I would love to connect with you. You can scan the QR code showed here and um, we, we can easily connect. So thank you for that. I like to start with just kind of level setting and thinking about the um, where we are on the journey, right? So Deloitte has done a fantastic job of defining the DNI maturity model. And it's defined as four stages. And the stages or levels, I should say, our level one is around compliance. Like, are we doing all the necessary things from an affirmative action perspective? And then second is around programmatic. And a lot of the programmatic things happen within our employee resource groups and perhaps even um, across other networks that may be uh, offered within our organizations or even clubs. And then as Deloitte has so well defined here, the transition point. And when we begin to really gain movement and momentum in this space is when organizations get to level three on the model and it is called the leader-led model, whereas DNA is beginning to really seep into the DNA of the corporation. Processes have been improved or refreshed to be, become more inclusive. And also we've mitigating different biases that may show up in our organizations, both from, a, from our people processes, as well as in our business processes. And then the last stage is around the integrated stage. And it's when DNA is really infused. It's the way we go to market uh, in an inclusive fashion. It's also the way that we interact with all of our employees and really able to see and create the value that is driven by diversity and inclusion. At principal, we define diversity and inclusion. So our, the way we define diversity is, diversity is everything that I am, and more importantly, it's everything that I'm not. 
And we wanted to take, and when I say we, I'm referencing our Executive Inclusion Council and some companies it's known as a diversity council, but it's the council that has oversight of the diversity strategy, as well as the uh, journey and timeline for how we'll advance the, the, um, how we'll advance the strategy as well. And we really wanted to take this approach of defining because A, we're a global organization and there are so many different uh, dimensions of diversity. It's important for every single employee to be able to see themselves in the way we define diversity as an organization. And also with those various dimensions of diversity, we also think it is extremely important to understand that the things that we're not, they're exactly what makes us dependent on one another and better together. And then we define the and as well. We don't really just jump from diversity to inclusion, but it's called diversity and inclusion. And for us, the and means that we have to do both. I remember my third grade teacher, Mrs. Rett, telling me in school, Miriam, if it says and, you have to do both. And that's extremely important, particularly in the diversity and inclusion space, because I believe one of the reasons why we as corporations haven't made the desired progress over the last 50 years in this space is because we really took it to mean diversity or inclusion. And in order to really have success in this space, you have to do both. Diversity cannot thrive without inclusion. And then inclusion is this very deep sense of belonging. It's a sense of feeling at home. Do I feel like I'm at home when I'm at work or do I feel like I'm a guest? And when you're a guest anywhere, um, you know, there are just certain things that you may or may not do. And we really want to make sure that because we know that we want to make sure that our employees feel at home because we understand that when employees feel at home, that they can do their very best work. Now, we didn't know that we would be in this COVID environment, COVID-19 environment, right? And our employees would really be working from home. But it's the feeling and it's the sense that we want people to feel welcome, included, engaged while here at work. And then when we bring the two together, diversity and inclusion is valuing everyone's perspective and winning together. It comes down to all of us putting on the same team jersey, understanding that we're a one team, that we have one stock price, we're one company and understanding what we need to do to remain competitive in the marketplace. Dan Houston, our CEO, he, um, I like to also call him our chief culture officer because he is all in on this work and as much as he is all in on our business deliverables. One of the things that, uh, quotes that I found on the website here when I was actually researching principal was this quote from Dan. And it really resonated with me. And the reason it resonated with me is because inclusion is really about the what we do. Um, I'm sorry, it's about how we do what we do. The what is the work that we get paid to do every single day. The how is we need to do it in a more inclusive and equitable manner. And this is about how we're able to accelerate the pace and the journey of the work that we get to do every day, how we're able to drive business growth to get the true returns out of diversity and inclusion that, um, that is promised through the business case itself. And I'll share a little bit more about the business case in the next slide. But as I move from talking about Dan, I really want to talk about this large ecosystem uh, that it takes to deliver diversity and inclusion and all of our partners who are included in this work. Um, you'll see here our board of our di directors, our employees and our leaders, because if you're talking about both diversity and inclusion, then you have to really think about 
Um, well, let's start, let's take a step back. If you're talking about diversity, and then that's really about, you know, hiring talent, bringing talent into the organization, and that can really reside with hiring leaders. But if you're talking about diversity and inclusion, inclusion, how included I feel, it is really enabled by not just my leader, but the people that I get to interact with on a daily basis in my work. And everyone can impact the way in which I feel included or not included. It's a huge community and we have to make sure that inclusion is embedded throughout our entire organization because if you truly mean inclusion, just the word itself, we're not leaving anyone out. We, we're all on this journey together. I like to call this the money slide. And although diversity and inclusion and in this work is the right thing to do, and that's one of our core values here at Principal, it's also the profitable thing to do. And we, like most, of, like all of your organizations, we're for profit and we are here to make more money to get more customers, to serve more people and enable people to have financial security. And on this journey, in order to do it, we have to make sure that we are coupling diversity with inclusion to get the results and the outcomes that are shown here in this slide. We want to make sure that we are the companies that are outperforming other companies, and that we are all, all that we are meeting and understanding our customers where they are. So we're seeing, speaking of customers, we're seeing some trends and I'd like to share a couple of those trends with you that we're seeing in the marketplace. Uh, customers expect companies to walk the wall. And you, you notice I didn't say talk the talk. Um, now more than ever, we're seeing more and more requests for data, understanding the representation of um, people in our organization, also looking for quali qualitative data, understanding what are the types of programs that we are doing to create a more inclusive environment for our employees, as well as in our communities and for our customers. Uh, we share a great deal of information. We become more and more transparent every other month, it feels like, and, and sharing this information with our customers. In the past, I would say that, um, you know, maybe it was just a, the right to um, pay or play. Um, well, I guess, I guess I should really just speak for now. It's the right to play. It's the right to be awarded business uh, to, in order to have diversity and inclusion in the forefront. I would even go as far to say that when it comes to finalist presentations, if all things are very similar, I'm seeing where diversity and inclusion is becoming the jump ball. What are you doing in this space and how can you, um, how, how, what progress? It's all about pro progress, not so much about excellence. What, what progress have you made in this space? And ESG, as you know, is becoming more and more important, particularly the S, right? The social piece. And that's where diversity and inclusion comes into play. We're seeing about, um, if you think about ESG holistically, um, 70% of the rating agencies that we're seeing, what we're seeing from the rating agencies now, the weight is heavily on diversity and inclusion or that S, if you will. Uh, we're also seeing that inclusion is essential for the changing workforce. Uh, inclusion shows up in many different ways. What we're hearing today is around flexibility in the workplace. It's extremely important. Feelings of inclusion in the workplace. This is transcending generations. This is transcending race and gender. Uh, employees want, desire, demand, are moving to companies who are flexible or, or inclusive and also I should say equitable in their practices. And then lastly, it's not just about gender. Um, and that's the way much, much of this work started with a high focus on gender diversity. And now, um, and I talked about the other dimensions of diversity earlier, and it's important that we all recognize that they are equally important. And I also want to point out that we wanna make sure that we're not uh, hiring diversity for diversity's sake. This is really about making sure that we have 
various different thinking styles at the table so that we can get to better outcomes for our customers, better outcomes for our employees, and better outcomes for our customers. So it's not just about hiring people, it's about the inclusion of people at key times when business decisions are being made at that table, not just having a seat at the table, but more importantly, having a voice at the table. Here's our global inclusion strategy. And um, our purpose at principle, similar to most financial companies, we want to make sure that we're fostering a world where financial security, security is accessible to all. And we do mean all, and we do this in our, through our products as well as through our foundation. Um, and then our strategic imperative, our, we really want to embolden all 18,000 of our employees so that they can feel licensed, equipped to bring their individual perspectives and their voices to the table. This is in service of our customers, in service of our community, and in service of growing our business. We have three high-level initiatives or strategic objectives, as they may be known in your organizations. And um, the first one is around infusing inclusion into everything that we do. We believe that this has to be up deep into our DNA and that it has to be embedded into both our people and our business practices. Now, you'll notice that I said infuse it into everything that we do. I believe that we have the right processes in place from a business as well as a people perspective. So we just need to refresh those existing processes so that they are more inclusive. And when we refresh those existing processes, it's more sustainable because there are processes that our organization is already very familiar with. And um, versus trying to bolt on and add new processes, that will there will come a time and there are some instances where you may have to insert a new process, but for the most part, you have everything that you need in the existing processes. And then last is the second is around building one community. How do we build one community around our four global walls? So that, and then also our four are the communities that our uh, employees live in. So that we are not just servicing our uh, customers, but we're also a great corporate partner. And we have, we're showing our, that we're responsible through our actions of our employees, which could show up as, simple as you know, how our employees are able to volunteer in their communities and to make a difference. And we enable that through um, employee, giving them employees days to volunteer um, during the workday. And then the last uh, objective for us is around strengthening inclusive leadership capabilities. And we're doing this through our partnership with the Neuro Leadership Institute. Uh, they have a pathway for learning. And uh, last year, our leaders went through the DECIDE program, which is focused on unconscious bias training. And also last year, we took our existing mentoring programs that we had that were either within our ERG program, ERGs or perhaps in even some of our businesses. And we purchased software through MentorClick. And with that, we have a global mentoring program because we wanted to make sure that mentoring is accessible to all employees. So with this software, an employee can sign up to get a mentor 365 days of the year. It works much like the dating uh, apps that are out there. You sign up, take about five minutes to complete your profile. What is it that I want to get out of a mentoring relationship? And then someone else may stop and say, hey, I want to be a mentee. This is what I'm good at. The software automatically matches them together and they start their mentoring relationship. And um, this year we're offering include training through the uh, Neuro Leadership Institute. And include training will help our employees and leaders. And when we're training on this, it's not so much, it's not only to help within our offices, but that these type of skills transfer out to our customers and the communities as well. So 
So with the INCLUDE training, we're teaching our leaders how to lift people up, how to help people feel valued, respected, and, and included. Um, I, I'm going to go deep on our metrics in a few minutes and share how we hold uh, each other and their organization accountable for diversity and inclusion. And then everything that we do, of course, is hinged upon our values, which are start with the customer, do what's right, own what's next, and then invest for the future. Some of the additional outcomes that we look for, aside from the ones that I've shared with you from Deloitte, is that we want to make sure that our leaders and our employees are very fluid in this space. And uh, that comes through the programs that I just talked to you about so that our employees have better understandings of the dimensions of diversity that are and perspectives that our customers are coming from. And then we can better anticipate what's needed for them. Uh, we also are deep into uh, improving our employee performances at all levels. And we're doing this again through that INCLUDE program because we want employees to feel at home. We want leaders to understand how to uh, activate the reward systems within employees versus the um, what we like to call the threat systems within employees, and then stay more and live more, plan more around the reward systems to increase the employee experience and to make sure that the employee is having a great uh, work experience. And then I'll just hit on this big innovation pipeline and ideation. And we have a resource group that is focused on, hey, you know, submit your ideas here, make it easy. There's a team that vets them for us. And then how do we get those to the business so that we can, they can be considered as opportunities to help drive business growth. So I guess the big takeaway from this slide and maybe even some of the other slides that I've talked to already, is really about making sure that diversity and inclusion is connected to your business strategy, making sure that you're using it to accelerate or even to fuel business growth. As I was on the last slide, I talked a little bit about the different talent-focused initiatives that we have already. And um, what I would also just hit on is one of our, what I like to think of as one of our next practices, and it's our inclusion pods. Our inclusion pods is basically, and, and I say next practice, because I think you know, there's some best practices out there, but I think we may be the first to market on this particular one. So our inclusion pods was originated within our retirement business. Um, organically through um, some employees there. And they came up with the idea of creating pause. And this is, these are small groups of call it four to six leaders that meet on a monthly basis through a guided conversation to become more fluid. Um, on issues of uh, on the dimensions of diversity and what they all mean, and um, and even topics such as intersectionality or microaggressions, and um, you do it in this I would say a safe but yet brave space with your peers, and um, it started in our. Uh, retirement business, but it is a program now that we're expanding globally across our organization and getting really good feedback because one of the things that we learned last summer uh, following the murder of George Floyd is that employees want more education, they want more knowledge, they want to be more fluent in this space. And we believe that employees should be as fluent in this space as they are in the business space. So uh, we're investing and um, in our employees and leaders through the programs that I've discussed earlier, as well as the ones that are here on the screen. The other one that I'll hit here is our comprehensive voluntary self-ID program. Um, we like to understand and we need to understand probably better said the makeup of our organization. So we use voluntary self-ID for employees to self-ID is maybe LGBTQ plus. Uh, a veteran um, or maybe um, an individual with a disability. And through this process, what we did last year is we embedded it, going back to let's not add on processes, right? We embedded the CEPID process into our annual compliance training. So every year, employees are intentionally asked if they have any of these dimensions of diversity. And we know that employees, well, we actually doubled the number of employees who self-ID'd by taking it and embedding it in this process. Now, 
We also know that as our environment becomes more and more inclusive, that employees will feel more comfortable sharing the various dimensions of diversity that they have. And it's important for us to know because it helps us to respond um, to our employees in a way. Many times we go out and, hey, some of these programs like the Global Mentoring Program that I mentioned, this is an enterprise program. But for people who have maybe two or three dimensions of diversity, which is intersection called intersectionality, then we may want to be a little bit more surgical in the approach and how we engage them and how we uh, include them. And um, so you, we use those insights in many different ways. So um, let's talk about accountability and accountability for this work is as important as accountability for the business results. If, you're, if we are going to make marked progress in this space, there has to be great accountability for the work. I actually think of the work as running a business unit myself. So we have both an inclusion index as well as a diversity index. Our inclusion index is embedded. I know there's a theme here, right? It's embedded in our engagement survey. So we ask our, employ we ask our employees these four questions on an annual basis to understand do you feel at home? Do you feel comfortable at work? And uh, we are scoring right now a 79% on our inclusion index. And with that index, um, we'll we'll working with leaders who are below that 79% included is a really good score, but we are not resting with that. We're partnering with our leaders who had lower scores to help them to um, improve. And then our diversity index today is comprised of these 17 metrics, and I'll be quite honest with you, it's too many. We are in the process of refreshing that for 2022, and um, with this, we will probably have 10 or less metrics and the metrics that matters most and using some um, best practices to help us determine what those metrics are. But real accountability is here. Our diversity index is one of the 12 metrics on our balanced corporate scorecard. Our balanced corporate scorecard has other metrics included such as customer retention, operating earnings, and they are all equally weighted. So this is how we um, determine our corporate bonus multiplier. It's based on these 12, on 12 metrics and they are, again, they're equally weighted and help us to put the right tension in the system to drive the necessary progress and results just as we expect from the angle of our businesses. So with that said, I would love to pause for a moment and um, take your questions. Uh, Emily, do we have any questions in the chat box or do we have folks who want to ask them in another manner? Yes, we don't have any currently in the chat box, but please feel free. Um, again, Miriam, thank you so much. Great information about all the great things that Principal is doing. And you know, Principal is a great partner of NAFA, so we definitely um, appreciate that relationship as well. So we'll give uh, people a couple of minutes if you want to, um, if you want to unmute, you can raise your hand um, or put your uh, questions in the chat box. Sometimes we have people being shy, so. Well, that's okay. So now's a great time to ask any questions that you may have. So Miriam, tell me, you know, you have uh, just joined, you know, obviously right before the pandemic uh, hit. Uh, so what what things are you seeing within principle and changes and what, what are some of the goals that you personally have in your role um, that you're hoping to accomplish? Yes, thank you for that question, Emily. It's a, it's a great question. So, you know, when I joined principal and I had to ask the question because there were some things that I found very unique about this organization. And one of the things that I'll point to that continues to impress me is, the, is that principal has, has had a female on its board of directors for nearly 50 years. Wow. And that's impressive because, you know, many companies are 
today having parties and celebrating their first woman on the board, right? And it's a good thing. So um, I just kind of poked around a little bit to understand how that happened. And I learned that it happened when the men went off to war. The women were left to run the company. They did such a fantastic job that they were left in place and they were able to maintain their roles when the men returned. And just, you know, they, there was other work to be done. So they found other roles for the male employees. And I think about that. I think about how organically it happened and how it happened over the decades through the transition of now six CEOs, how Principal has continued to have good diversity on its board of directors as well as within its senior leadership teams. So that has impressed me. And I believe that Principal has the model in place. Like we can go back to that playbook. And we are doing that today to bring in even more dimensions of diversity here. So I would say the appetite for the DNI work uh, for principal is very strong here. I would also say that the tone at the top is right where you need it to be. It's um, leaders from my colleagues in this space. It's our dream is to have a leadership team that's um, committed to progress in the space and not just you know, moving the need or a step change improvements, but how are we going to make a marked difference in the space? Um, and then the last thing I guess I would hit on here, Emily, is that um, the leaders and the employees. Um, and a part of, I think principal is a magnet for attracting great talent. And I would say that people are curious about the DNI space and understand through the many years of the culture, we have a very tenured organization as well, understand the importance of diversity. So I appreciate the foundation that has been laid for this work. And uh, with I, the model that I talked about earlier from Deloitte, we're able to just really transition now to level three in this work, to have a leader led organization where it gets deep into our DNA and that I'll openly say that our external brand and our internal brand, they match. What we say externally is exactly what happens here internally. So that's the way I would think about your question. Great. No, that's a great answer. And uh, we got another one. Uh, Dennis is wondering, wanting to know a little bit more about your mentoring program and uh, kind of an outline of what that looks like and, and how you implement that. Yes, yeah, so our global mentoring program, and I'm going to take down this for a moment. Our global mentoring program um, is a 10 month program and uh, it's open to all employees around the globe. Uh, we use MentorClick as the vendor for the program and um, it's, it sits in the cloud. So it's very easy implementation, something you can start up very quickly. And I would venture to say uh, a tool that pays for itself twice over. And, um, you know, we just do a rollout to our employees and encourage employees to sign up. The tool is very self-sufficient, whereas you're able to get statistics from the tool on a monthly basis and understand the number of people who are participating in the program and also what they focused on during their last mentoring session. Um, I'm happy to connect offline if you like, Dennis, to share more information on the program, but we believe that we intended it to say, hey, here are some skills that we believe are important to our organization for our employees to have, but we're also learning that employees are using the tool like during COVID to really just have someone to connect with and have shared experiences. We've had employees who have gone through maybe the financial crisis, right? And they're better able to navigate COVID because of that. But we also have employees who are new to the workforce and this is their first experience with such with a crisis. So uh, it's been helpful to have it during this season as well for that. And then another benefit is just, uh, you know, coaching, um, on, uh, on helping folks to navigate their careers. So it is a wonderful tool and the MentorClick has done an awesome job of creating the software that is really user-friendly for the program. And then lastly, I would say that uh, the return on it, it is a great play on retention as well. Awesome. So Dennis yeah. said, yes, um, he would like to connect. So I will pair you to uh, in a- Thank you for that. Time. 
Yeah, no problem. Great. Any other questions, comments? Um, again, you know, great example of um, leadership within principle for what you're doing um, on this front. Uh, you know, and ACLI is another partner of NAFA's, and so we truly appreciate what you're what you're doing there as well. Um, you know, we together when we bring together all of our voices, we definitely um, can make much more of a bigger statement um, that this is. This is something that our industry needs to mm -hmm. have on the forefront of their radar. Yeah, Emily, just curious, um, going back to the Deloitte maturity model and the first level being compliance, the second one programming, the third leader led and fourth integrated. Uh, would you put in the comment chat and the comment section here, you know, where you think your organization is on the radar? Are you in level one, level two, level three, or level four? Be helpful just to understand the audience a little bit more and where we are. So one again is compliance, two is uh, programmatic, three leader led, and four integrated. What do you guys think? So think about think about not necessarily. Um, I'll do it, or Dennis, if you want to do it from the NAFA perspective, um, but think about your own uh, organizations and where where you guys think that that is at. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and use. If you move your mouse over, um, the chat feature will pop up. People are shy. <laughs> well, that's okay. <laughs> Um, you know, I think NAFA is probably not quite leader led. I think we're probably like a three um, mm -hmm. on there is just, you know, really starting to get going. We're, we're probably that close from being, being leader, leader led. Um, is yeah. And, and that's the transition point, right? So I think that's a phenomenal place to be. And, um, you know, you get having the infrastructure in place so that you can advance and get there. So all the other building blocks through compliance and programmatic are extremely important. So um, that's a great place to be. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely. No, and I think that's, and that's always a good checkpoint too, um, to go back to that and just kind of, you know, reevaluate because I would imagine that as, staff changes as you know the country evolves that maybe companies might slide a little bit on that scale sure. and have to readjust and um you know it's kind of a good thing to always keep in the back of your mind as far as where um where we've uh, been so okay let's see what does dennis say uh personally i've been lucky active in sports from an early age uh caught me to look beyond the differences and focus on the abilities yeah, sports is a is a great great tool, and I think that when I know when parents roll, enroll students and their children in sports, you know we hope that they learn a lot of skills in addition to just learning the game itself. And I would say inclusion is definitely one of those learnings that come out of sports. So thank you for sharing that, Dennis. Absolutely, Emily. If no other questions, I'll turn it back to you. Okay, well, thank you again, everyone, for participating in today's webinar. Again, we thank Miriam and our partnership with Principal. Um, great relationship with them. Uh, this will be available on demand. So if you uh, know of any of your colleagues who uh, were unable to participate, we will have that available. And again, Miriam, thank you for your time. And we will talk to you all very soon. Thank you, Emily. And thanks, everyone, for participating. Thank you.